small guard. Like when I be seeing younger cats and they be like, I want to go to the league or so forth, phone, I instantly look at, the first thing I look at is height. Right, Before we right, talk about right, anything, right. I'd be like, man, you got to be a legit 6'1", 6'2". You have guys like uh, like Isaiah Thomas who done played good in this league and show that he can play in this league, and it's hard for him to get on another team. I want you to speak about how hard it is for a guard your size, or guys that's, that's smaller than 6'1", 6'2", mm-hmm. to really have longevity in, yeah. this, in this league. Like that, so you see the Isaiah Thomas who scored fifties in this league, forties yeah. in this league, and yeah. he still can't carry the team to, yeah. to last. It's like a "What have you done for me lately?" type yeah. league, and especially for a guy who's naturally they always want to say that you undersized, but they don't really for the hoopers that don't mean that you can't ball. You know, you got to be on point. You know, it's it's um, it's disappointing. You know, because he's a he's a guy that that has put in a lot of work. And I think, you know, for me, like, again, we talked about this earlier, it's the mentorship. Mm -hmm. I think guys need the mentorship, you know what I mean? And the protection, the protection of, of, of what being a player in the NBA is, but also at the same time, you know, now when you got the right mentorship and an Isaiah Thomas can do that, now as a coach, you got a comfort zone. Make sense? Mm -hmm. And so, You know, I think that like I hear a lot of guys talking. I said this a long time ago. You know, when you when you are when you under six feet, man, you gotta go pick full court. You gotta go pick up full court. (laughs) Man, you gotta have a jumper. You gotta bring something. Like man, like 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 you gotta like you gotta really be on point with Mm -hmm. again. Yeah, can't turn the ball over all up. Yeah, and I just and I just think I just think at times like. Small guards, you know, if you're gonna be special, and there, and when I say special, when you can, when you can score it and pass it, there's only really been a handful of those in history. Yeah, like you can go down history. Yeah, you know, and there's only been a handful of those. So you gotta, like you said, you gotta do something to pop off that TV. And the first thing I'm doing is picking up full court. You gotta figure out how to get on the court. Get on the court. Mm-hmm. Then you gotta figure out how to impact the game without scoring. Yeah. Then you the last thing you got to do is figure out how to get your game if you are a score how to get your game within oh, that game. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But being able to shoot, picking up full court, being able to run a team, being able to be uh, verbal, being able to communicate, being able to articulate, knowing five positions, oh. knowing where guys are supposed to be like that's your job. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. your job. If you're if you're a small guard, that's your job. And you gotta know, and you gotta know what the game needs. You gotta know how to read the room. Well, reading the it, room, re- reading the room is the most underappreciated sense that you could ever have. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people in a lot of different areas, sports, business, man. They don't know how to read the room. Yeah. <laughs> As you just too, like I say, for being a small guard, you you come across some coaches that they're not the biggest fans of of a smaller guard. Right. You went through the situation. I think you was in Portland when uh, they wanted Scotty and maybe Bonzi to run more point guard, bigger guards, or they wanted to go with this. Yeah. How did you handle that? Cause you had so much success right. to this point. It's like, all right, I didn't show y'all this works. Right, I'm, right, I'm cool, right. I shouldn't have these problems. Right. But you get it like mid, like in the middle of your career. Yeah. How was that for you mentally to, to handle that of, of a coach that's, you know, changing the direction. And it's I, all because of hype, not right. because of the game. Right. I I I think that um I think that back when, you know, for what you know, for whatever reason, when he went in that direction, I took it as a slap in the face, but I also took it like, okay, just let me just just let me not even reinvent myself, but let me pivot. Yeah. Let me sit back, okay. Just see what this is what they're gonna to do. do. Let me see. Let me let me see how I can impact this game again. Because again, it's like, how do you bring value, you know? And so those are the things that I try to do. Um, and I think like when you're a small guard, you got to be able to do that, you know. And so I was. It's funny you even say that because I was telling the kids this story because I took a guy out of the lineup, and what I told him when I took him out of the lineup is that, man, you don't play hard enough in practice for the stuff to translate in the game. In the game. Mm-hmm. So you trying to play harder in the game and you ain't play hard in practice and it's like, nah, the basketball guy's not <laughs> letting you, you do that, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, as I sat back, you know, again, it was just, you know, 
figuring out how I can impact the game. And I knew that it would get back, ultimately come back to me. You know what I mean? And so um, I've always tried to, I've all, and as I've gotten older, I've even become more of this. You know, I just kind of never try to get too high and never get too low. And when, mm -hmm. and when the chips not falling to where, where they may, even during that time, I just try to tell the people around me, man, if you got the other stuff to say, man, that ain't helping me when I go into Straight practice up. at 10 in the morning. Yeah. You know, because that's always a problem. Like, we, we always going to have some issues. As yeah. players, right? Mm -hmm. But then when somebody on the on the outside gassing you up on it, and they just in your ear with it, man, you you know it just kind of it kind of fuels song. the fire. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. so.